The whole public sector is under pressure, lack of money. The government have given us quite a strict instruction to reduce the size of the state and therefore policing is a core component of that and it's going to get smaller. Um, we have to get smarter in how we use public money and innovate as much as possible. The whole principle behind merging the fire service and the police service together is not to reduce down the footprint. Morning John. Morning Justin, how are you? It's about bringing together different disciplines, different skills into one organisation that can be deployed in different kind of circumstances, upskill people and actually have a different kind of career path. Here in Northamptonshire, one of the smaller forces in England and Wales have taken that approach uh, to create an opportunity to review our frontline service delivery uh, whilst facing budget cuts, but to make us more effective and efficient, look at opportunities with other blue light services and ensure that we're delivering the best for the public of Northamptonshire whilst keeping people safe. Over the last two and a half years we've brought our senior leadership team together and we've really focused on enhancing the joint work that we do in the communities. And those initiatives range from joint fire stations, joint headquarters and jointly crewed teams and vehicles that are out on the roads of Northamptonshire. MIAT is a multi-agency incident assessment team. The MIAT vehicle is a vehicle that is fitted out with some specialist equipment and they are used for uh, pre-planned events. So take for instance the Formula One Grand Prix that's held at Silverstone every year. They would be part of the planning process for that or for spontaneous events whereby we would respond in the same vehicle to do an initial assessment of what resources we need there from a fire, police and ambulance perspective. The Royal Intervention Vehicle is a vehicle which is staffed by both a police officer and a fire officer. Its main priorities are to be uh, in the rural areas, given a quick response. We don't just deal with both police and fire incidents, we also do co-response for the ambulance service. We also do a lot of work in the community. We'll go and visit farmers and we've set up a thing called Farm Watch and they get emails of overnight crime. And what we're doing from a fire service point of view also is gathering all the information of where all the land lies for the farmers, where they have their haystacks, where they keep their fertilisers, so that should they have an incident on that farm, we've got that information to be able to go on there and deal with it appropriately. My long-term ambition is to get to a place in Northamptonshire where when you dial 999 for an emergency, someone says to you, how can we help you, as opposed to which service do you need? For me, the future um, is going to be very, very different and perhaps we might not have police, fire and ambulance. We may just have an agency that's an emergency response agency and for me that's, that's really exciting. Police officer numbers were fixed in November 2012 by me at 12.20 and we made all our savings from the middle and back office and we're going to continue that way. But how do you actually deliver more police officers when the public want more police officers when you don't have the money? So we went back to communities and said we need you to help us, we need you to volunteer in large number so by May 2016, I want to see a thousand special constables. We've created opportunities in areas that you wouldn't expect normally to see special constables in. So on uh, traffic, for example, or safer roads teams, we also encourage our officers to use their skills to the best of their abilities. So if, if we've got people with particular financial skills, they can work alongside financial crime. If we've got people who carry rural skills with them, farmers, for example, will encourage them to work in a, in, a, in a community environment, a community setting. Effectively now, if you apply at the right time of the month, you can get your offer letter within seven days. Go through each of the stages of recruitment. What's important to say is we haven't taken out any of the quality measures. So vetting is still the same, the medical um, standards are still the same, the assessment standards are still the same. We've just changed our mindset from you want us to we want you. We're getting out there and knocking on people's doors in the communities where we want the officers to work. So we're trying to attract the right demographic of people by actually going to them and, and then encouraging them to look at our website or, or contact us for further details. We have policing that is rooted in the public and the public support and consent of the public. And I think that's really important. You can't get better than going out and asking volunteers to be part of that organisation. It breeds transparency and openness continually brings in new blood, new ideas, people from different skills. On the case of merging other organisations, I think it's a no-brainer in terms of in this country, in the United Kingdom right now, with so little money available, having a duplication of control rooms and fleet and just the very basic HR, procurement, IT, all of that. Uh, having two organisations that do that, it's terribly expensive. We can do that for less money, put that money back on the front line. The public demand a better service from the public sector. The private sector have demonstrated 
how they can make people's lives easier. The public sector feels to me like 50 years behind and we've got a long way to getting back to putting the customer first.